Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, I've got another graphite drawing for you today. Um, I'm going to be copying a photograph from the Belgian photographer Leonard Maison. Uh, but before I talk about the drawing, I'll quickly run you through the art materials I'm using for this one. Um, I'm using my usual De La Rowney smooth heavyweight paper, A4 sized. Um, I've used a selection of pencils, mostly um, Pentel P200 range of mechanical pencils with various leads in them from 2H to HB, 2B and 4B. Um, and I've also used some Faber-Castell matte pencils in this and some regular Faber-Castell 9000 pencils as well. I'll leave links in the description below um, to all the materials that I used. So as you can see there from the reference photo, this is going to be sort of a rainy, misty sort of street scene with people walking up and down the street um, and the reflections reflecting there in the wet pavement should make for a really nice graphite drawing this one. It's quite a complicated scene to draw actually um, that's why I've used the grid method to get all the line work done and get the size and proportions of everything about right. Um, I wouldn't call this a beginner's drawing at all definitely one for the intermediates and the more advanced. Um, quite a challenging one but they're always fun to do, aren't they? It's always good just to draw anything for the sake of drawing, in my opinion. Um, but if you like this drawing and you want to follow along with it, there'll be a reference photo posted for you over on my Patreon channel. And I think there's nine other videos to accompany this one, um, guiding you along every step of the way, showing you how to do this drawing, you know, if you fancy having a go at it. Now, it's not the usual sort of landscape drawing that I do, um, but this was another competition winner. Um, from a competition that we had over on Patreon where the viewers send in photos, reference photos that they want me to draw and make a lesson out of and this one came second um, so that's why I'm drawing this one today. Now for the drawing itself there's actually quite a lot of atmospheric perspective and linear perspective um, in this one. So even though I'm working with grid lines, I did actually use a few converging lines for the building and I did actually resort to um, using a ruler to measure the height and the width of the uh, figures in the drawing there. Now that's okay, I mean once you've got the, you know, the size and proportion and linear perspective correct, your biggest challenge with this one is getting the aerial perspective, getting that nice misty background and keeping things nice and sharp and uh, nicely in focus in the foreground and to do that I really went dark as you can see look on the figures there I actually used a 14B um, matte Faber-Castell pencil and that's going to get you really nice and dark and then keeping the background nice and light with the lighter tones like 2H and a little bit of graphite powder and lots of blending and that kind of thing it's going to give you that sort of natural atmospheric perspective look to the, uh, to the drawing um, but like I say, you've, you've really got to decide where the focal point is, what you want to draw attention to in the picture, um, and keep that nicely contrasting with the background, and keep it nice and sharp looking. But again, therein lies another problem, because we've got these people walking at all different distances, and if we draw them all in really sharp and black, they're just, you know, we're going to lose that aerial perspective straight away. So even with the people, I was kind of mindful to try and keep the people in the distance there just a little bit lighter, a little bit less detailed um, than the figures in the foreground. And now we've got the sky and the background trees in there. They're looking nice and soft and light. You can kind of see, you know, the nice contrast that I've got there with that kind of misty background and the sharper looking figures in the foreground. It gives a really nice sort of aerial perspective to the drawing. And not only that, it brings a lot more focus and definition to the foreground figures. Um, it makes them pop a lot more and makes for a much nicer focal point. You know, keeping those backgrounds nice and soft. Even if in a reference photo they're not soft, you know, they might be quite detailed and a lot darker. To actually use a little bit of artistic license and soften them down a little bit and remove some of the detail and to enhance the detail more in the foreground you know, it's going to give you that greater sort of distance and depth in the picture, even though it might not be exactly the same as the reference photo. You know, using artistic license, we can create that nice effect 
of a lot more depth and character as well, um, you know, in the drawing. Now, the buildings here on the left hand side, well, in fact, they're not actually buildings. I thought they were at first, um, but it's actually a wall um, with statues on top. Um, one of the members on Patreon very kindly sent in a photo of this from um, Google Maps as it is today. It's quite fascinating actually to see the scene as it was today. And um, when you look at this face on, you can actually see it's a wall and not a building. Um, now on top of this wall there's some very, very awkward looking statues as you can see. And from the viewer's standpoint, you know, where I'm looking, where, we're, where the photo was taken from, you know, we're kind of looking up at the statues, seeing the underside of them and they don't make sense to the human eye at all. They just look like a great big blob of abstract shapes stuck on top of a building. You know, they they just, they look really odd. Um, so I, I didn't really know what to do about that. So I thought, okay, well, let's just draw what we see, not what we think we see. Um, let's just try and simplify it and play it down a little bit. Try not to make anything special out of it at all. You know, we don't want the viewer's eye to be drawn to those areas. So. In situations like that, you know, you in, in a lot of drawings you often get these um, awkward areas where you don't really know what they are, but you've got to kind of include them in the drawing somehow because it's an integral part of it. If you leave it out, it's going to look wrong. So they've got to go in and you've got to start making decisions as to how you're going to tackle these areas. Are you going to really try and make sense of them? and get as much detail as you can in there or are you just going to play them down just kind of draw what you see not what you think you see get the basic abstract shapes in and just play them down a little bit because they're not really a focal point uh, or a very important part of the drawing so I decided just to play them down and um, keep them very low key even though you know they are very visible um, you know in the reference photo they don't look much different really but again they don't really make much sense to the human eye viewing the picture from this angle but if you were to walk round to the right a little bit more and look at that wall face on they kind of make a lot more sense you can see clearly what the statues actually are right okay so we're just about at the end of the drawing now um, so don't forget this is a full real-time lesson over on my patreon channel with nine other videos and several reference photos to accompany this and of course I'm always there to ask questions you know if you're struggling with anything I'm always happy to help um, I'll leave links to patreon in the end screen cards and in the description below as well and it's only £3.50 a month to join that's all it is and you'll get access to thousands of videos over there so there we go there's the finished drawing I hope you like that uh, please leave a comment and a thumbs up, really do appreciate it and I always do read your comments. Um, so yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, it really helps the channel out. Okay, so thanks very much for viewing everyone, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.